Console versus PC. <laughs> it's the classic debate, ladies and gentlemen, that dates back further than Fortnite. Oof. But within the game's community, this few guys just continues to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Many pros are now moving over to keyboard and mouse, and that raises yet another question. Should I switch to? Well, in this video, we're gonna give you all the info you need about which one you should be using to reach your maximum potential. And by the end of the video, hey, you should have a solid understanding of which fits you the best. But uh, before we get started, Pro Guys has a small announcement to make. Hey, we're adding a ton of new features to our site, which include one, exclusive guide videos for our pro members every single day. Two, Pro Pass now grants access to all games such as League of Legends, Smash Brothers, CSGO, and Overwatch. More free coaching passes and points for InstaPro if you're a pro member, so head on over to Pro Guys by clicking the link in the description below. With the Fortnite World Cup bringing Fortnite's competitive scene front and center, while well, many players are wanting to improve more than ever. I mean, even my grandmother's getting better. Don't hate, she's probably better than you. Woo! Okay, anyways, your setup and equipment is a great place to start. Okay, so why do so many players think that keyboard and mouse are superior? And why do some pros refuse to switch? Well, we're going to be going over all the pros and cons, and we're going to find out which makes the most sense for you to use specifically. So before we get started, make sure to grab your favorite snack, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right, so obviously, most people think that the keyboard and mouse players have the advantage, okay? After all, almost everyone that qualified for the World Cup was on a keyboard and mouse. But why? Well, the most obvious thing is to look at is speed. On a keyboard and mouse, you can just move from point A to point B much faster because your speed is basically as fast as your hand moves, not how high your sensitivity is. It's actually as quick as your arm moves. On PC, you have an entire range of motion starting at your arm, where you perform the big 180 degree flicks all the way down to the minor wrist adjustments. That means you could play on a much lower sensitivity and still be able to flick. Just make sure your mouse pad is big enough. The limits of your aiming really are just how good your hands are, not how strong the aim assist is. Now, don't get me wrong, sensitivity matters on a mouse, but not quite as much as on a controller. What? Uh, yeah. Well, that might not be your everyday flick. Mr. Savage is an absolute monster. Granted, he definitely spent years and years perfecting that aim. That took a lot of practice, but it's still nuts just to see how good some people can get. But nevertheless, that's a vital part of aiming, guys, where consoles are just kind of lacking. Well, you could just crank up your sensitivity a ton, but that'll just make it really tough to precisely build an aim. So you don't want to do that. Try looking up your favorite pro sensitivity and then set it to what they're playing on. That should help a lot. Although mice aren't actually the best for tracking at first. Most pro players do have really solid tracing, but that takes a while to develop. All the other platforms have aim assist, right? Which makes it really, really easy to have smooth aim. Even mobile players can play pretty well with an automatic weapon because it doesn't require too much aim. All right, the next is keybinds. Okay, so on a standard computer keyboard, right, there are 110 keys, which means you have a potential of 110 keybinds, plus all the keys in your mouse. And some of you guys, like, some of your mouses are just ridiculous. Like, some of them are, like, bigger than my car. All right, like, why is your mouse so big, bro? Like, seriously, I can't even see you. You're hiding behind your mouse. Anyways, you're probably not even going to be using all the keybinds in the first place, but it's still a lot more than console. What really makes this so advantageous is that they're easy to reach. You don't even have to take your fingers off of any important keys to hit the other keybinds, which also makes building a lot easier. Controllers do have enough to have every command field, but some of them are just really cumbersome to reach. Okay, so one big problem in most competitive games is that you actually have to take your hands off of the movement keys to hit something else, which actually can be a huge problem. On a keyboard, this rarely happens, making it much better for quick building. Weapon switching is actually really tough on a console because you have to remove your hands. Well, we're gonna give this one to keyboard and mouse. All right, so now we've got controller. And you might be surprised how many benefits it actually has. They're actually really not terrible. That's why we see some pro players deciding to just play with the controller on their PC because it's good enough. It really is. Going back to ground zero might not be an option for pros, but maybe it can be for you. So, the first thing we have is the obvious one, aim assist, the infamous L2 spam. It's been nerfed a bit, but it's still pretty overpowered. 
You might have seen those clips of pro players L2 spamming from a few hundred meters away and hitting every single headshot. Due to the inherent disadvantages of a console, there's a need for some extra aim assist, right? Which actually makes it really solid for tracing enemies. It's been debated whether or not this makes aiming easier on controller, but it's something keyboard and mouse doesn't even have, so it's still a pro. Thank God they nerfed it. Thank God. Another thing is 360 degree movement. Obviously, a joystick can move in an entire circle of direction, meaning you can move in way more directions than on a keyboard, where you can only move in eight. That makes movement much smoother on a controller. Razer X is a great example of this. He is so good because he's able to move so smoothly around his builds. Clean. Well, this is debatable, and it really does come down to your preferences. Okay, so keep in mind, all right, keep in mind, you can use either controller, keyboard, and mouse on both platforms. There are adapters for both consoles, right, and most controllers are actually supported on Windows. Okay, well, the final conclusion is that keyboard and mouse is better. I'm sorry to disappoint you, my controller people. You probably should get some tissue, Kleenex. Listen, due to the vast improvements in the quickness, keyboard and mouse are just a lot more efficient for Fortnite. Plain and simple, guys, that's why there are so many PC players that qualify for the World Cup. And there's just significantly more pros using keyboard and mouse as well. Of course, just like anything else, there are exceptions, but if you really want to reach your maximum skill ceiling, all right, it's probably a good idea to switch. I get hit up on my Insta every single day with this question. Should I switch? Should I switch? Should I switch? Should I go to PC? What, is, what should I do? Not everyone has the time or hands to be as good as Faceway or even Ghost Aiden, but it's also important to know that they're still playing on a PC, which gives them significantly better performance and reduced input lag. But if you've been playing on console for a while, all right, and you're already playing well, listen, there's just no need to switch unless you're really just trying to be the best of the best. It does take a while to learn good aiming and muscle memory. For some, it may even take years. So trust me when I say this, trust us. It's frustrating to pick up at first, but at some point you will get it. Where you at, bro? I'm not with you. What the f are you doing, PK? So we have seen a few pros make the switch. And even though most of them switched a while ago, it's still possible that we can see some new PC players just start to rise in the ranks. All right, so you're never going to guess who was a console player. Never. All right, so since you're never going to guess, I might as well tell you. Booga. Yep, I just said it. The one that just won the biggest Fortnite championship in the world. Have you heard of him? Yeah, that guy. That one. And if he can do it, you can too. So believe in yourself. If you want to make the switch, hey, I just say, go for it. Just be ready to grind and grind and grind because it isn't that easy. But if you put the practice in, hey, anything is possible. I guarantee you that. It does feel really, really good when you surpass your old console self, though. Yeah, that's a great moment. It actually feels like an entirely new game. You feel like you're on top of the world. I know because I didn't actually do it, but my grandma did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm playing. But, you know, let's not discredit controllers completely either. They can be really, really good builders too. Face Sway, Razer X, Ghost Innocence. You know, they are all really, really good. Check out our most recent video on Innocence to see some of his insane plays. They make the controller just seem really good. Maybe even better. Plus, it does give them clout, <laughs> honestly. So, as you can probably tell, it's all up to you if you decide to switch. Because lots of it just depends on if it's worth it to you. So take notes of what we said. Make sure it's your choice and it's not the end of the world. If you're still not sure, then try using a keyboard and mouse on console and just see how it feels. Once you feel really, really good, then maybe make the switch to buy a PC. Just like I tell you guys on my Instagram, just spend some time in creative, all right? And you could probably just reach where you want to be at, like how you were on console, within a few months. Of the pro players who switched from controller, it took most of them around three months to get to the point that they were on a controller. Booga spent a few months adjusting the keyboard and mouse, and he was already a top-tier player. Oh yeah, please do not fall until you need a $10,000 PC myth, okay? It's not true. All right, so you can get one for a couple hundred dollars, and it actually should perform better than a console, all right? For a pretty bare-bones budget build, you'll be looking at around $500. All right, so for those of you that are not old enough to work yet, okay, just ask your parents if you could just take out the trash or walk the dog, and you could probably make some money doing that, all right? So go clean those dishes, make some money. So, of course, $500 is obviously more than a console, but it is worth more considering all it has to offer. 
Not only is the performance better, but you're also investing in a great experience. You can do so, so much more on a PC than you could do on a console, regardless of the price. And once the hardware becomes outdated, you can just replace the one component and it'll be good for years to come. Anyways, this isn't supposed to be a PC versus console debate, but lots of people just seem to consider cost as an issue when it isn't too bad. Last but certainly not least, we've got to mention the mobile and Switch players, right? If you're looking to switch from one of those platforms, hey, but aren't sure whether to go to console or PC, just get a PC. It's going to be worth the extra money in the long run. Or, you know, just jump into a mech. Then you won't have to know how to aim and you'll just be on your way to the World Cup. That works. Or just run and never return while you have the chance. Go, go, shoot, run. Since the World Cup just ended, there won't be a major tournament for a while. And you could just use this time to develop your skills. Speaking of developing skills, there is a certain way to train that will let you get better as quickly as possible. Start by configuring your keybinds. You can just check online for some solid options. So for starters, I recommend checking out 72 hours keybinds. It's widely regarded as the best keybinds that fit the current state of the game. Next, yes, hop into creative and just get used to building and editing. You know, just start off simple with some easy ramp rushes and just work your way up to just more complex techniques as you go. In fact, you know, it really helps to just take everything slow, all right? Try to do a 90 really slowly, and then just think about each individual placement. Then eventually speed it up more and more until you like where you really are. Spend at least a few hours in here because it takes a while to lose that controller muscle memory. Then jump into a public game. That's actually where you're gonna apply it and really start to pick up some muscle memory. People like to spend hours discussing the pros and cons of each accessory. But in the end of the day, hey, if you enjoy what you're using, then just stick with it, guys. As we said before, having a good game sense will always win over mechanical skill. So, did we help you make a decision today? Interested to know? What system are you playing on? Let us know what you think of this video and if you have any suggestions. Hey guys, once again, this is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Instagram. We got a lot going on. Love to talk to you. Thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll see you soon.